So it's a great honour for me to be here today with Dr. Henry Richter. He's the author of this book, America's Leap Into Space. And it talks about his time at JPL and the first Explorer satellites. Now, Explorer was the first satellite in space launched by the free world to beam radio transmissions back to the Earth. And of course, Dr. Richter, later, uh, you oversaw Surveyor, which was the first time we'd visited our moon and actually landed on the moon. And that paved the way for the later Apollo missions of which I was a great fan, fixed to my TV. I can still remember as a young man watching all those missions. I want to ask you something, uh, Dr. Richter, if I may. Today, there's a, a move amongst the church, uh, sadly by Christians, supporting the idea of a flat earth. We have lots of articles on our website that talk about this, and certainly, theologically, the idea of a spherical earth does not violate scripture. But I'd like to talk to you as a Bible-believing Christian to talk about the science because surely you developed satellites that supposedly orbited the Earth. I cannot believe that people actually believe in a flat Earth at this point in time but because I've been all the way around it myself. However, we know from satellite tracking that the satellites do go around the world and come back up the other side. We were required to have a number of tracking stations because the radio transmissions from a satellite require a line of sight. That means it must be able to be seen by the tracking station to get the signals. And so as the satellite comes up over the horizon, we track it. It disappears the other horizon. So we need another tracking station just beyond to stay in constant contact with the satellite. We use satellites to measure the, the sphericity of the Earth. So we have scientific measurements as to how clearly a sphere we have. It's an oblate spheroid, but it's very close to a perfect sphere. So we just know from tracking that satellites go all the way around, whether it's in a polar orbit, going over the poles, or an equatorial orbit. I think some of the confusion comes, Dr. Richter, because people take some passages in the Psalms, for example, as, as literal. Now, of course, we believe in Genesis as a real, literal, uh, histo historical account of creation. Both creation and evolution are what we would call historical science. You worked in an area that we would call operational science, things we can repeat, test, uh, observe. So people wrongly conflate the two. They think of the world science evolution, and then they think that perhaps we're, we're trusting the world science when they tell us that the Earth is, is a sphere. And then there's another area where, called geocentrism, which are these ideas that, in fact, the universe uh, revolves around the Earth. Now, you, with Surveyor, of course, you helped land uh, a craft on the Moon. Now, the Moon orbits the Earth. So when that Surveyor spacecraft left the Earth, where did you have to aim in advance? Well, we know the laws of planetary motion and, and the laws of physics that determine it. And we can compute with great precision where the moon was a hundred years ago or where it's going to be a hundred years from now. And so when we launch toward the moon or a planet, we know about the arrival time and we have to compute where the planet will be in its motion around the sun at that point. The moon rotates around the Earth. It took several days for a surveyor to get there. We knew the speed and the arrival time, so we could compute just where the moon was, set the guidance system to aim for that point in space so it meets the moon at the proper place at the proper time. It, it, in other words, it intersects its path. Now, of course, the moon orbits the Earth, uh, so that wouldn't be a violation of what a geocentrist believed. But now, what about when we send satellites out into those far reaches you know, of space? You know, we're intersecting planets like Saturn or Jupiter or even Pluto, as they've done recently. It takes years for those craft to travel there. So if I said to you something like, in fact, the clockwork motion of the planets, I think, is an attribute of God's design, uh, would you agree with something like that? Oh, absolutely.
course, Dr. Richter, unfortunately, some people would say that you and I are somehow misled or even worse, that we might be part of some sort of conspiracy or we just haven't understood and we've been taken in by some sort of false science. Well, as we mentioned, you are a scientist. You could, uh, you could test and observe these things. But um, you're a Bible-believing Christian, so what would you say to folks like that? I came to my own conclusions by studying the Bible myself. And uh, it was a while before I found I could get teaching that helped me understand some of the deeper things of the Bible. But to me, the Bible is just very clear as to how the universe was put together, why man was created, why we exist, and the fact that our Creator wanted us to know Him, which is mind-blowing, really, to be part of the universe, but at the same time, to have a relationship with the one that created the universe, as well as created me. Now, one of the, the great rocket scientists of our time was Dr. Werner von Braun, who, uh, who at the end of the Second World War, of course, he was a German and he worked for the Nazis. And my understanding is he became a Christian during his time here in America. And I wrote in my book, Alien Intrusion, that he believed that uh, our endeavors and searching in space would, would reveal the handiwork of the Creator. Well, you've developed craft that have been out there. What, what would you say in that regard? Well, first of all, I worked with von Braun. He, he provided the rocket that launched our satellite, the Redstone. But um, I became a Christian after age 40. Von Braun also later in life. Both events were beyond the time that we knew each other. I have regrets I didn't track him down and, and talk about our faith, but I didn't. But he... Uh, he was a great thinker, he was very interested in space travel, but uh, again, he gave the glory to God that put it all together. I've got a book at home uh, from a, uh, an astronaut who's been on board the space shuttle, and it's full of beautiful colored photographs of the Earth from space. I can see my home country, Australia, and you know we can see the, the west coast of America where we are now. And of course, to me, one of the most profound photographs ever taken in all of human history was Apollo 8. Mm -hmm. Borman, Lovell and Anders, when they circumnavigated the moon and on Christmas Day, they broadcast a message back to the earth. They read from Genesis 1, but we see earth rise. For all the people back on earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. They was good. You know, the big blue marble, they called it. And but again, it shows the precision with which the universe exists. The fact that the earth rose at a certain time, they were all prepared to, to photograph it and gave them a real realization as to how vast the universe is and how marvelous. Dr. Richter, thank you very much. So Rob, when I uh, interviewed Dr. Henry Richter, uh, we talked about design in the universe. He talked about the laws of planetary motion. And of course, those th planets obey gravity. Gravity is something you and I can test here on Earth. And in fact, Isaac Newton is credited with the discovery of gravity, one of the greatest scientists, arguably, who ever lived. Uh, he professed to be a Christian. And a creationist. The laws of planetary motion devised by Johannes Kepler. Another Christian. Great another testimony. Christian, uh, etc. I understand that 
there's a genuine motive in all of this. People are, believe that they're wanting to have a high view of Scripture. Absolutely. And there's passages in Scripture that say, for example, the earth shall not be moved. But elsewhere in Scripture it says, I shall not be moved, and the trees will clap their hands with joy. Should we yes. take those literally? Uh, you have to take words in their proper historical and grammatical context. You know, for the past 2,000 years, Christian scholarship has been unanimous that the earth is a sphere. And how is it that all those scholars looking at these Greek and Hebrew words have come to the conclusion that the Bible is not teaching that the earth is flat? Yeah. One of the greatest successes in human history is called the scientific method. And that was pioneered by Christians. Mm. And the flat earthers and the, the geocentrists, they have to reject the last 500 or more years of scientific advances in physics. Just taking that a little bit further, gravity is caused by mass. Yes. The larger the object, greater the gravity. Yes, and we can measure that here on Earth. So, nobody, flat Earther or a geocentrist, or wouldn't disagree, I should say, that the Sun and Jupiter are larger than the Earth. That being the case then... Actually, the flat Earthers deny that the Sun is larger than the Earth. Oh, my goodness. Because the modern flat Earth people, they've got a plate like Earth. In the old, the old version, people might have thought the sun goes under the earth and gets hauled and then pops up again. But they have a spotlight sun that just does this over a flat earth. It has to be smaller than the earth and close, maybe a thousand miles away or something like that. So really they've rejected all experimental science because we can measure the distance to the sun. It's easy. All you have to do is have two people on the earth to look at the sun at the same time and measure the angle. And that angle is so small that the sun has to be millions of miles away because if it was only a thousand miles away, you get a very steep angle like that and you, using simple you know, high school trigonometry, you could figure out the distance. I come from Australia and New Zealand, as you can probably tell from my accent. But this new flat earthism clearly has a northern hemisphere bias with a north pole at the center. But for one thing, we can see the Southern Cross constellation. It's even on our flags. But people in Europe and America can't see it. But we can't see the North Star from the South. This shows that we are indeed on different halves of a sphere. Also, South Africa is in the same time zone as Germany. But at night, the Germans see the North Star while South Africans are viewing the Southern Cross. The same constellations as seen from New Zealand. Actually, leading Christian scholars in the Middle Ages used the same arguments in principle. For example, the Venerable Bede, John Sacrobosco, and Thomas Aquinas. But the arguments are so much stronger now that we can communicate instantly all around the world. Finally, Jesus himself must have known about different time zones. He spoke of his second coming, which will be in an instant. Now, he said two people would be in bed at night, so one would be taken and one left. But at the same time, two women would be grinding corn in the morning and one taken, the other left. And two men in the field later in the day, one taken, one left. So Jesus understood that at one time, some parts of the earth would be morning, some parts afternoon, and other parts at night. I really want to appeal to people to use your critical thinking skills. The facilities that God has given us I mean, the Bible says, test the spirits to see if they are from God. That means use critical thinking to, to determine, you know, theological propositions. Well, the same thing is true about science. Use critical thinking. And a lot of people don't quite understand how science works. And a lot of what we, we read and people trying to have one of these alternate viewpoints are they're trying to build a case for themselves, but that's not how science works. Mm -hmm. Science works by disproving the other side. And so if you you know, if you believe the Earth is flat or if you think that the Earth is the center of the universe, you've got to determine what experiment could disprove your view and then go analyze the data from that experiment. So, for example, I could give you a, a hundred suggestions that support my idea, mm -hmm. but if you come up with one, one. just Politics. one, then the whole theory is invalidated. Yes. So, as we finish, we're just going to put on screen as we go some key articles that people need to read because in those articles you have raised points that invalidate yes. those particular ideas. So as we go, we'll just put those on screen. And, yeah. uh, and we want to appeal to our brothers and sisters in Christ to seriously weigh these issues. <laughs>